Welcome back to another episode of Novellio. Today is Tuesday, June 15th, 2021, and I'm going to continue on with my reading of It Happened on Dufferin Terrace. Assured the job offer was legitimate, a weight vanished from Serenity's shoulders. She loved her position at Thacker Price and Associates, but also embraced change. In her mind, she fist pumped once she got outside the door of the home. Brief consultation of the map revealed Avenue St. Denis swept around the curve. If she continued that way, she would arrive at the intersection of St. Louis, with which she was familiar. The name changed to Rue d'Otoile after she rounded the corner. Neat terraced houses bordered the one side, the first with bright turquoise doors and window frames. Everywhere inside the walled apportionment, was nearby everything. If Serenity were to take the Jonathan's post, she would have to find a place to live. Affixed to the next house in a row was a bronze plaque. Taupe colored stucco covered the exterior and the trim was a darker shade. The varnished round topped front door contained a narrow matching window. Serenity paused outside the residence. The house was of the home of the René Levesque, a former premier of the province, while he held the position. She took out her mobile and snapped a photo of the memorial. The snow still fell, not as heavy as before, but large flakes continued to float down from the sky. With no other pressing business, diagram of the city in hand and being daylight, Serenity decided to explore other areas within the fortifications. Beyond Saint, Rue Saint-Louis, an esplanade, esplanade stretched along following the battlements. Houses, inns, and hotels stood on the other side. <clears throat> Some of the homes had signs in the casements. Unsure if they said rent or sale, she would determine that at a later date. Cars whizzed by on the cobbles. Their tires weaned with intermittent popping sounds on the cracks between the stones first road on her right was one way going away from her. Rather down, rather walk down, down it. She proceeded straight on. Installed in the blockade was another gate topped with a tower. From there the terrain descended in a sharp grade. With a carpet of white covering the sidewalk, Serenity determined the prudent course of action was to take another route. She crossed and went away from the wall. Metal cladding designed to look like brick concealed the first building to the right perhaps granite or clay at one time, but now impossible to know. The stone structure on the left had round-topped windows and antique light fixtures bolted to the walls. A brass plaque framed in ornate leaves was next to a red door. Not written in English, she was unable to read the inscription. Rue Dauphine appeared flat. Serenity didn't have to put on her best mountain goat boots to traverse the steep slopes. Scaffolding surrounded some structures further down a former church morphed into a museum of literature. A retaining wall and interlocking pavers invited people to enter the courtyard in the museum library itself. Serenity bucked the trend and took a cobbled pathway leading in a different direction. A metal arch adorned with pine bows marked the entrance and exit. The top of the price building peeked over the roofs of the properties lining the far side of the street. Continuing towards the landmark structure, Serenity soon found herself at the Christmas market. Not that she needed to buy anything more, she crossed the road to wander through the stalls. She adored the quaintness of the scene. People doing their last-minute buying jostled from one stall to another. A man taller than her stomped on her instep. Her winter boots might have been excellent for walking, but didn't protect her feet from clods like this guy. He didn't even utter an apology. Until now, everyone in Quebec City was friendly. Her lack of French skills hadn't been a deterrent. She liked that. English was the language of business worldwide. What if you only spoke Arabic or a dialect of Chinese? At least when the clod trod on her foot, she wasn't drinking a hot chocolate like the first time she visited the cheerful holiday tract. She paid a visit to each stall in the pre precinct behind City Hall, then moved over to the other part, where she came from heaved with people. Over here, so many people crowded in, there was no room to move. The cloying steps of various perfumes and colognes were overpowering and took her breath away. 
She couldn't escape soon enough. Exit spotted. Serenity ducked under a raised arm and rushed out. On the street, she gulped down some breaths, trying to suck on contaminated air into her lungs and the taste of out of her mouth and throat. The walk back to the hotel didn't help her make a decision. Chapter 20. Chateau Frontenac, Quebec City. The glowing red numerals on the alarm clock read 4.55. Too early to get up. Roger said 8 would be fine. Blankets pulled over her head. She snuggled back into the cozy bed. Another hour to hour and a half sleep was all she wanted. What woke her so prematurely on Christmas morning? Nerves? Excitement? Both were the same thing just at opposite ends of the spectrum. Unable to return to slumber, she tossed and turned. Still showering at this time of day and waking the other residents was rude. Just because she was awake and couldn't sleep didn't mean they were. After flopping like a fish in a bucket of water for another 45 minutes, Serenity hurled the covers aside. Still too soon to start running water. She could choose her outfit. She turned on the light and heaved her massive case on the bed. Her original intention was to leave for Toronto after the meetings concluded on Friday and packed that morning. After deciding to stay in Quebec City longer, she never unpacked. Her black dress pants were nearly creased on the pile of clothing on that side of the valise. What to wear with them? The shopping bag sat on the floor under the desk. In addition to Roger's present and the snood she purchased for herself, she had also bought a red hand-knit cashmere sweater. Serenity pulled out the wool pullover, perfect with her dark trousers. She unzipped the cover separating the compartments and took out the shoe carrier holding her shiny ebony pumps. Outfit sorted. Selecting her clothes didn't help settle her anxiety. Before closing the suitcase, she yanked out the other items she needed, then zipped up the hard shell and returned it to the closet inside the door. Showered, dressed, makeup applied, and hair dried, a nervous serenity was ready to make a start for Roger's house. She ensured his Christmas gift was in the seasonal felt sack with with Adams. She had she had the SAQ bag containing the two bottles sat beside it. The sun rose over the water in shades of orange, pink, and red, filtered through the blue gray clouds, creating a beautiful sight. Off to the west the skies were overcast. Billows of gunmetal gray hung low and the visibility was practically nil. A snowstorm had been forecast for Christmas Day, and for once, the meteorologists were right. Serenity walked to Rogers as the church bells on both sides of the river started to chime, welcoming the day. Surprisingly, many people were out and about. Some were dog walkers, others were joggers, and others, like her, toted armloads of packages and colorful wrappings. Runners accepted. Everyone else greeted her with a bonjour, joyeux Noël. Her heart soared with happiness. This was the first time Christmas was more than just another day to her. She quickened her pace. The inclement conditions had moved in by the time she arrived at Rogers. Fat snowflakes drifted down, covering the roadways and sidewalks. She reached for the doorbell. The young boy yelled from somewhere indoors, Look, it's snowing! The door flew open before she could push the buzzer. The excited youngster stood in front of her. His mouth gaped wide. Hi, Adam. Dad, Serenity's here. He hollered. <laughs> he hollered and disappeared back inside. Serenity tiptoed over the threshold and closed the door behind her. Roger appeared from the other room with Tori trotting along beside him. Let me take these for you, he said as he removed the parcels from her hands and placed them by the archway. You'll have to excuse Adam. He's excited. Maybe even more this year since you agreed to join us. Relieved of her packages, Serenity took off her boots and put on her pumps. The shoes were cold from being in just the nylon drawstring bag. The house was warm, almost sweltering. Coat removed, she crammed her mitts and beret down the sleeve. Roger hung it on the hook and directed her into the living room. Five chairs stood around the table. Who else did he invite? She expected only the three of them. I brought wine. I didn't know what you were serving, so I got a bottle of red and white. A gray-haired woman came out of the dining area. I thought I heard voices. She was shorter than Roger and stocky, but like him, her smile lit up the room. Mom, this is Serenity. She's the guest I told you about, and this is my mother, Lucille. It's lovely to meet you, Mrs. Scott. She reached out to shake the woman's hand. Roger's mother wrapped her into a warm embrace. My son has told me so much about you. It's as if I already 
know you. Really? She didn't tell him a great deal about herself at all. Had his mom embellished to make her feel at ease? Maybe? Not wanting to appear, appear rude, Serenity returned the hug. When she pulled back, she shielded her mouth with her hand and whispered, I didn't buy anything for your mother. I hope she's not offended. He shook his head and said, no. Tori trotted to Serenity's side and pushed into her hand. She stroked the dog's head. In return, the black lab sat and leaned against her leg, pushing her off balance into Roger. I must get back to the turkey. You'll excuse me? Sure, Mom. On the other, on their own again in the front room, Serenity breathed a sigh of relief. Roger's mother being there caught her off guard. The woman was so different from her own mother. A loving family was unfamiliar to her. Adam charged into the lounge. Did you bring me a present? Yes. Don't be rude, young man. He's fine. I figured there was an ulterior motive behind it. She turned to him. Yes, you may. She lowered her voice to a whisper. One for you, too. Yay, the boy cheered and dove at the tree. Whoa, down, sport. May you, maybe your grandmother would like to watch. Mom, Mal, come in here. Adam's dying to open his gift from Serenity. Did he mean Melissa, the young woman she met in St. John? The one who had her brother here in Quebec City? One unexpected guest blindsided her. But two? Average families did come together on special occasions. Who else was here? His sister came in the, to the front room, wiping her hands with a tea towel. It's great to see you again. Won't hug you. My hands are greasy. Oh, I love your sweater. Mrs. Scott came in and sat in the armchair near the hearth. Only then did Serenity notice a fire burning. No wonder the room was so warm. Is this the one? Adam hoisted a large package and shook, rattling the contents. She squatted beside him. Yes. Now, if you already have it, you can exchange it for something different. The festively colored wrapping flew into the air and drifted to the floor. Wow, thanks. I don't have this one. Look, Dad, ultimate banking. Can we play now? Later, after the bird is in the oven. Aw, Adam's chin sank against his chest. Tell you what, why don't you look up the rules and figure out how the game goes so when we do sit down, you can teach us? Serenity suggested, hoping to tear up the lad who looked on the verge of tears. The young boy let out a whoop of excitement and tore through the plastic surrounding the box. Roger's mother and sister started for the kitchen. Can I help? she offered. You're fine for now, dear, but later, Mrs. Scott said, in that case, Mom, we'll take Tori out for a walk. He turned to her. His dark brown eyes held her gaze, making her heart beat quicken. Outside the ro house, Roger steered her and the dog across the roadway. Beyond the sidewalk, the area opened up. Two long-barreled cannons occupied a cement pad. He leaned against the wood-capped battlements overlooking the city below. I got a little something for you, too. We'll exchange gifts later once everyone else had turned in for the night. The gesture of bringing a gift to his son deepened his feelings for her. She didn't have to do that. This was the first Christmas since before his wife died. Adam had been so happy. Thoughts of those times made him sad. Tears burned his eyes and he spun away from her as he blinked them back. Serenity looped her arm through his. He sucked in a ragged breath. He didn't hadn't expected his emotions to overcome him because of Monopoly. He was ready for another, was he ready for another relationship? He took her left hand in his right, so she was away from the curb, and they started up the street. After they rounded the corner, the pavement narrowed. He released his grip so she could precede him. Opposite a high, modern, metal capped stone wall on the other side, he said, This is where I work. The entire complex is a hospital property, hoping to eliminate the awkward silence. Neither had spoken at, since outside his house. At Cote du Palais, Roger shortened Tori's lead and tightened his hold on it. He clutched Serenity's hand and escorted the two of them through the squirrely intersection. He didn't know why he came this way. There were far better places to walk. Once he had them safely across, he made a right on Rue de l'Arsenal by warehouse buildings through a parking lot into Parkland. He unclipped the leash and the dog bounded off. Snow kicked up as she went. Occasionally, Tori turned around and barked. Hop on, I'll give you a piggyback ride, Roger said, feeling playful. What? Did that mean she thought he was crazy? Maybe he was, but at the moment it felt like the right thing to do. Or had she never heard it referred to as that? He turned, well, I don't know what you're th talking about. To be 30-something and not know? Stand behind me. 
grab around my neck and jump. Her arms looped over his shoulders. The first attempt was a failure. Serenity screamed and tightened her grip, choking him. Okay, not so tight. Sorry. Just you startled me when you reached behind my leg. My fault. I'll bend down a bit. Make it easier for you. This time, things went according to plan, and he had her in position. Quick boost, and she shrieked. Somewhat off balance, he started, adjusting her weight as he went. Once he settled her on his back, he sped up and pranced around, making her squeal and laugh. Her laughter made Tori bark, and he, she chased along beside the pair. At the stone barrier surrounding the snow-covered green space, Roger put Serenity down and fastened Tori's leash to her collar. After crossing the street, they walked through the other section of Artillery Park, emerging at Rue Saint-Jean. I was over here the other day, she said. Did you go through the place? No, I came down here. You never said. Well, you never asked either. Roger chuckled and pulled her to him, then wrapped his arm around her shoulders. She leaned into him. Her standing so close revived feelings not experienced since his wife died. In front of his house, he couldn't wait any longer to kiss Serenity. He placed his palms on the sides of her face and tipped her head back, moved his mouth down and brushed his lips against hers. She didn't pull back, which was a positive thing. Her arms encircled his waist. It was too soon to tell her he loved her, too early to know for sure if he did. He was fond of her and enjoyed being with her. Love? More time he would have to be spent with her to determine if his feelings went that deep. Adam met them at the front door. You guys were gone awfully long. Sorry, kiddo, lost track of time. At least you're dressed now. Roger helped her out of her coat. Did you figure out the rules, she asked. Yep, the boy beamed. Can we play now? My sister and your grandmother still slaving in the kitchen? Yippers! Maybe they'd like to join us. Grandma, Auntie Mel, want to play Monopoly with us? Adam yelled as he raced to the other room. Relieved to have a moment by himself with Serenity, Roger wrapped his arm around her waist. He didn't think I was too forward just now. Not at all. She enveloped him in her arms. You can kiss me again now if you want. He accepted her invitation. No sooner had their lips touched than Mrs. Scott said, I knew there was a reason for you inviting a young lady to keep Christmas with you. His cheeks burned. Even in his mid-thirties, his mother retained the ability to make him blush. Adam set up the game. Aw, there's five of us, and only four can play, he pouted. You're fine. I need to look after the turkey anyway. You kids go on. I'll sit and watch. She returned the fifth chair to the corner, and the others adjusted their seats and gathered around the table. Roger picked up the rules, pamphlet, and read along as his son explained the nuances of using electronics instead of paper money. Otherwise, there didn't seem to be any difference between the, this version and the one he grew up playing. When the kitchen door swung on Mrs. Scott's exit, the bird sat on aluminum foil on the countertop. The thing was big enough to feed a third world country, not just four adults and one child. On occasion, Serenity bought a small chicken and, after cooking, had meat left over for the entire week. After a couple of rounds of Monopoly, she excused herself. I'll be, I'll just be a minute. Mr. Real Estate Tycoon, she said, directing her attention to Adam, seems to be conducting a major property deal. She paused before pushing through the, to the other room. Are you sure I can't help with anything, Mrs. Scott? You're fine, dear. Serenity reclined against the worktop. Careful, not there. You'll get your lovely clothes dirty. Rudder's mother sat a massive bowl of stuffing on the counter in the location she first stopped. The woman scooped up a great dollop of the seasoned potatoes and breadcrumbs and thrust it into the cavity. My son hasn't smiled this much since before Bridget passed away. Must be down to you. I don't think I can take all the credit, she folded her arms as she spoke. Tell me about his wife. Roger told me she died. I don't like to spill, speak ill of the dead, you know. She brushed an errant lock of silver hair off her face with her forearm. She was a lovely girl but had problems. Mrs. Scott lowered her voice. You know those problems. Serenity, it's your turn, Adam yelled from the adjoining room. She turned to the older woman. I'm being summoned. Can we finish this later? An expression of resignation crossed over Roger's mother's face. There was more to his late wife's death than anyone was willing to tell. I'm coming. She pushed open the door. So what did I miss? I just made a deal with Aunt Mel to buy Baltic Avenue from her. So now I have the full set. Serenity sat down and rolled the dice. She counted out the numbers as she moved her token, stopping on a well-developed St. Charles place. Who owns this? Roger and his sister shook their heads. 
Adam smiled. You owe me five thousand dollars. That's me finished. All my properties are mortgaged or dealt to you three, and I'm broke. Mrs. Scott poked her head into the room. How's the match coming along? Serenity's out. She just landed on another one of my places and can't pay the rent. The young boy crowed. crowed. Could you put the turkey in the oven for me, please? It's too heavy for me. Sure, Mom. He left the room and returned a few minutes later. So, Mel, do we declare Adam the winner or carry on and lose our shirts? Roger lowered himself to the sofa. He'd not played since he was a kid still at home in Ottawa. The truth was he forgot how much fun the activity was. When it came to this game, his son reminded him much of himself at that age. The most significant difference back then was more people could take part at one time and you used paper money <clears throat> the serenity's choice of gift was every bit as entertaining for him the clatter of gathering up the monopoly board and its related pieces floated in the air serenity, serenity and mel chatted away like old friends he was happy they got on so well his heart warmed having at least some of his family with him the others either couldn't afford to come home or had plans with their in-laws. Roger didn't always agree with Bridget's parents, but not having them around, especially at this time of year, hurt. His mother-in-law had cut them off without as much as a buy, buy your leave. His, her reasoning was Bridget was the only tie and severed the connection soon after her daughter's death. Minutes later, Serenity came and sat on the floor, leaning against the sectional between his legs. She stretched hers out in front of her. You can sit up here beside me. You don't have to hunker down there. I'm fine. She tipped her head back and puckered her lips in a kiss. The dog took their actions as her cue to join them. She plunked down next to Serenity, her tail thumping the hardwood. Before settling, she stood, turned a few circles, and laid on the area rug with her head on Serenity's lap. Tori, don't be a pain. Go, Roger said in a stern tone. She's fine. In response, the black lab snorted and snuggled closer. Even his dog was a traitor. Adam vaulted over the end of the sofa and scrambled over to him. Can we watch a movie, Dad? What one? Home Alone. Of all the movies his son could choose, he selected that one. Really? He groaned. Don't be such a curmudgeon. I never saw it, said Serenity. Surprised by her comment, he shook his head. With the publicity from the time of its release until now, to never have seen the show? Go on, then. He surrendered to the choice of DVDs. His sister held no opinion on an alternative suggestion. His mother still puttered in the kitchen. So unless they did and were on his side, he was outnumbered. Throughout the movie, Serenity giggled at the sight gags. Iron slamming into foreheads, hats started on fire were far from funny, but in the context portrayed, they were hilarious. He detested the nonsense. Once the DVD finally ended the, and the credits rolled, Roger puffed out a sigh. He knew all too well Adam would want to watch the second in the series. Only a matter of time until his son swapped the discs and Home Alone 2 dominated the television. At least now the aroma of cooking poultry chucked full of stuffing tickled his nose. The bird was still a long way off from being ready, but was hot enough the fragrant seasonings wafted in the air.